relationship, and this number in this case is 0.43 psi per foot. This may cause a little bit of confusion, but remember that there is, there is G here. Inside this number, there is G. And we'll talk about that when we talk about uh, international units in a bit. But uh, here, the pressure will increase linearly with depth. That's kind of clear when we have a, a body of water, it's everything water. But the question is, like for example in Barton Spring, why is, why is the water so cold over there? Anyone knows? It's, it's coming out from, in this case, some faults and some fractures in the carbonates around here. And that makes, uh, that makes the, the water pick up the temperature from the rock uh, which is relatively low, so when it gets to the surface, it's cold. Uh, but my question here is, is not about temperature, it's about what is the pressure of the water at a depth like that. And let's consider that the water is flowing very slowly. Would it be the same than the one we predict inside here or not? So I see people saying no, some other people saying yes. Who goes for? Yes, it's the same. You calculate it with the same equation. Raise your hand. No one? So the, the answer is, it's, uh, it's, a, it's the same, same equation. Uh, as long as there is, this is an equilibrium, and there is a, a connected path from the surface to anywhere in a fracture of a rock or inside a pore of a rock, the pressure here or in some pores, as long as they are connected, is going to be the same and it doesn't matter if there is rock, the pore pressure is going to be that, as long as it is in uh, equilibrium with this free surface. So the pressure is just going to be the gradient times uh, the depth to the free surface. Um, so uh, do we, let's try to see where this number comes from, 0.43. Uh, what is the density of water in uh, pounds per uh, cubic uh, feet, foot? I always forget how to say it. It's feet or foot? Cubic, cubic feet, okay. So, what is this number, guys? How many pounds in a cubic feet? 62.4. Okay. Uh, 62.4 pounds cubic feet. All right. Uh, so he, here's where the trick comes. If I want to include the constant of gravity in, uh, in field units or imperial units in general, the only thing I'm going to do is to say that that pound is not a pound mass, but it's a pound force. And a pound force, I'm going to put an arrow there, meaning that it is force. And it's the same number, but now it, it's a pound force. Usually in uh, field units, uh, we don't talk about pounds per uh, square foot. Uh, we say, uh, like to measure that in uh, square inches, so in PSI. So in order to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this number and take, keep the pound force there, take uh, one feet over here and keep a foot square over here, but now I'm going to put it in inches. How many inches do I have in one foot? 12, right? So 12 inches and this is going to be square. 
So the result I'm going to get here is the gradient in terms of a number that I like that you compute, guys. You can use your cell phones. Uh, I, I like to start doing some polls with, for you, with you using your cell phone. I have to figure that out, okay? But I'll try to do that uh, as soon as I can. So what is going to be uh, this number? This is going to be a PSI, and this is just going to be PSI per foot. And what is 62.4 divided 12 squared? Uh, did you guys make the, made the number? This point? I'm going to trust you. That is 0.433. I don't remember 0 0.433, 0 0.4, 0 uh, but let's say it's that number. So that's where it comes from. That's a gradient, OK? And pounds force per square inch per every foot. All right. So we are going to be also working with international units. Uh, why? Because some equations are easier in international units. Because you also have to learn international units. You're going to sometimes partner with other companies or work somewhere else that uh, you need to read international units. Sometimes you may have to uh, see uh, other work, uh, read reports with international units. So it's very important that we also do that. Uh, so in international units, uh, what we do in order to calculate the gradient is now we use the G. And this is going to be the density of water which we're going to say in this case, we're going to take 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. And G is 9.8 meter second square. And that's, I'm going to round it to 10. And this is going to be 10,000 uh, watt. What is a kilograms? A kilogram times meter per second square. <coughs> it's a, a newton, and I'm going to split this denominator here in meter square and one times meter. And what is this going to be? This is called a Pascal, OK? So now we have units of Pascal per meter. But those units are a little bit odd. Uh, they are not easy to use. And it's much easier to convert this uh, gradient to uh, a different pressure uh, unit, it's still with an international system, and a different length unit. If you work through the conversion, you will see that the result of this is 10 MPa per kilometer. That's the gradient of water, hydrostatic gradient of water. And these are two numbers that I like that you remember very well. Probably you already knew the one in PSI per foot. Uh, now I'm going to ask you to also remember the number in MPA per kilometer. So. If you are at the reservoir, which is a, at the kilometer of depth, then the pressure is going to be 10 MPa. And how many atmos atmosphere is uh, 10 MPa? Anyone know? <coughs> 100 atmospheres, right? So 10 MPa is 100 atmospheres. So that's kind of easy also to, to look at that. Uh, I'm going to tell you a joke, but it's not a joke, but it's actually. But don't tell anyone, OK? I have this friend that bought a, a watch. And, uh, and I, I was joking that I would take him downstairs to my lab and put a 1,000 atmospheres on it to see if he can resist or not. <laughs> because I think the limit sometimes is for those watches like, that you can dive stuff, it's like 100 atmosphere at most, probably 10. But in the soft surface, if you go very deep, in the laboratory and the experience that we do, we can reach easily 
a hundred to a thousand or two thousand atmospheres, very high pressures. Uh, okay, uh, so we know how to compute hydrostatic pore pressure. All right, so this is going to be uh, the first thing that we need in order to compute this new, new quantity that we're going to see today. Let's see how we're doing with time. Still okay. Uh, and this was pore pressure, okay? All right. So now we're going to consider that we have rock. So let's say this is the surface. Uh, we have a house here. And you're drilling a well bore to a given reservoir. The question is, at a given location in the reservoir, first, what is the pore pressure, which we already know more or less how to, how to compute. And second, we need to know what is the, I'm, I'm gonna tell you first, this one has many names. Some people call it overburden. Um, but the most accurate name would be total vertical stress. We want to know what is that because that is what tells you how compacted is the rock, how much force the rock is carrying, okay? So let's assume that we already know what the pressure is, and we're going to assume that uh, this is in hydrostatic equilibrium with a free surface, so that is, uh, we can calculate the pressure with the equation we said before. That equation, we said, if the density of the water is constant, it would give you the value of pore pressure as the density of water times G times Z. And I remind you that this is a non-short condition. Okay. The question now is what is this, this overburden and how we calculate it? Any ideas about how we can do that? So when we compute pore pressure, this equation is telling, uh, telling us that basically this is the weight of the water times depth. So if we want to compute stress, the total stress, uh, which weight do we have to use? Let, let, let me uh, tell you this a little bit differently. Imagine that, that you get right here and that we, you're trying to use a, a jack and lift the earth. How much pressure do you need in that jack in order to lift the earth up? So you're trying to, to, wait, to lift everything, right? If you're trying to lift everything, then which density is the one that you're going to need in order to compute? All of that. Let me give you a hint. This SV is also going to involve the density, it's also going to involve gravity, and will also involve depth. But there is here a little detail that we need to take into account. For this density, uh, anyone? Anyone want to say anything? No, you said something? Total density. The total density of what? Rock and water. Of the rock and water. How do we call this one? Bulk. The bulk. This is the bulk density of the rock. And that involves the entire rock 
with the pores and whatever it's inside the rock. It might be, it might be water, uh, it might be oil, it might be gas, it, it might be anything. Usually the density bulk If we consider that we just have one type of mineral, let's, let's imagine a sandstone just made up of quartz, is going to be the density of the mineral times one minus porosity plus, let's imagine this just made of water, the density of water times porosity. If you were to have uh, more than one mineral, you need to break this into the volume fractions of the minerals. For example, you have 50% quartz, 50% calcite. Then you have to break this one in those two components. And you will you'll do this in the, in the homework, okay? So um, r remember what I'm telling you. It's just a volumetric fraction. Let's say 20% quartz, then 20% quartz times the density of quartz, 80% calcite, 80% times the density of calcite. And the same with this one. If you have, uh, let, let me add here. Probably here you need a volume of quartz, volume of dolomite, volume of calcite, uh, volume of organic matter, if you're dealing with shales, all of those are going to go into this solid part. In the fluids part, you're gonna have saturation of water, saturation of oil, saturation of gas, saturation of CO2, I don't know, anything. But everything goes into this equation. And so, before we do numbers, uh, which one is going to be bigger, the density bulk or the density of the water? The bulk, right? Because minerals are, are heavy, are heavy, are about 2.5 to three times as heavy as water. So the result of 